Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Bird. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Tony. I'm your host today. We were right before we got started here working on some technical things, but I uh, hope you could hear me good. Um, I am joined tonight by a couple episodes ago, um, my good man, Mike, uh, rejoining me to talk some really awesome music. Mike, thanks for taking the time out. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It, uh, um, I mean, yeah, the last time was fun and it goes by too fast, but it <laughs> really does. Back. And honestly, this radio show that you got is is amazing. We'll get started there in a second. Just the set list you are spitting out are just awesome and amazing. But yesterday, which was really amazing, is that you brought this uh forefront track to my attention that has been a little bit of a while since I've heard it. Mike, let me tell you something awesome about yourself. The way you go deep on some of these artists that uh, is amazing. And honestly, I, it's my favorite thing. So when you're posting the King Crimson tracks and saying, this is what I've been listening to, it's pretty awesome, man. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm I'm an albums guy. And if I'm going to listen to an artist, I'm, I'm going to listen to an entire album. Um if, if they've got something new coming out, I'll go back a release or two and take in, take in the entire album just to see. For for me, I just can't get a gauge on an artist from, you know, one song or just, you know, two or three songs off the album. Like, I want to hear, I want to hear the whole thing. I want to hear what, what they've got. If, you know, they, they go and experiment, if, you know, there, there, there just might be a, track on the back half that is is a surprise so um i i think about the uh the smashing pumpkins record Oshi oceania when that came out mm -hmm. um just for me like the if i would have given up on the front half then i would have missed out on the back half which i think the back half is great on on that record so um yeah i'm i'm an albums guy through and through and you know, I was doing a deep dive on King Crimson and came up on Islands, which is one of my favorite King Crimson records. And yeah, Sa Sailor's Tale just really hit yesterday. I was like, man, this is just ripping. I love how Crimson always, like, you got different style. You got different time periods of Crimson that sound different. Um, you know, you have that early 80s where uh, a you got Tony Levin in the band and you mm -hmm. got uh, what's his name? The other guy who played with the talking heads for a while. Um, not Fripp. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Adrian, who, not Adrian, Adrian, but, uh, yeah, yeah, Adrian Bellow. Yeah. Um, just really. And they're actually coming to the horseshoe casino. I don't know if you've seen that. It's like the discipline. Uh, it's like Tony Levin. It's pretty much everyone besides Robert Fripp with the drummer from right. playing with them. Always curious to see how that would sound, but digging into things like King Crimson, man, it's always awesome. Oh yeah. But uh, what if you something new? Give us something new that you've listened to. So a new release, something that has come out in the last couple of weeks that you really enjoy. Uh, just released on Friday is the new the new OCs, which I'm a big OCs fan. Um, oh. Get to more of that a little bit later, but um, yeah, that album's really, really good. It's so, from my understanding, John Dwyer doesn't play any guitar on this record. He's it's all samples that he's doing. Oh. Um, so it's you know both both drummer, synth, bass, and just John Dwyer just digging into so many different samples. Um, that's, all, that's awesome. Yeah, so it's it, it's a really it's a really good record. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to dig into the. I haven't their older stuff I've listened to, but uh, that's the thing. That sometimes even that's why I love reaching out when someone shares a new album because it like where do you is there like a, a new album list that you know I always pick up. I still pick up the uh, Illinois Entertainer when <laughs> I um, when I'm in and I it has the new releases there. Um, but man, there's just, back in the day, it seemed to be a little bit easier to come across a list. I mean, probably. I mean, I could search on the internet, but um, you know, you were always finding the good stuff, man. Yeah, in between, um, I look at Consequence of Sound quite a bit. 
Um, Northern Transmissions is another one that I look at quite a bit. Um, obviously, I have the good fortune of um, being in a radio studio, so I can kind of nose through and see what else is out there. Um, and there's a couple other ones that escape me. Oh, um, Monorail, Monorail Music. Okay. Um, is, is a good one. Boomcat and uh, Forced Exposure are good ones as well. I mean, that's uh, local. I mean, uh, getting exposure to local artists is huge. Um, getting exposure to, you know, OCs, you know, just dis different stuff is is good because a lot of these artists need to get listened to. Um, you know, I mean, everybody sometimes has heard your, your Nirvanas and your Sound Gardens and all of that. Some of these other artists and digging deeper is, is is what it's all about. Yeah, and Chicago has quite a great DIY scene going on. Um, just so many great artists and bands, um, you know, over, over, over the last few years have really put Chicago on, on the map. And um, one of my favorite records of the year, uh, Babe Report, mm. um, they're, they're, they're local. And, um, you know, just so many other artists like that are putting out great stuff. Did I lose you? Are you there? Okay. Oh, yes. uh, you froze for a second, but you're back. Yeah, I, I fixed it. I fixed it. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Am I good? Are we good now? Yeah. All right. So that's, you know, going through your amazing uh, chirp radio um you just posted i've probably before this episode i went through your last three or four set lists man i mean you're this last one okay let's let's get started at 1202 you get started and you play this which is amazing that they have a music video i mean front 242 uh when i checked out your list and i see that right at the top it's what's cool. It, you you play a little of everything. Yeah, that's. <clears throat> I I try to have an emphasis on local stuff. So, for instance, Front Two Four Two, they're not local, but Wax Tracks is mm -hmm. um, who put out the uh, album that that song is off of. So, I mean that that was just a really good way to get get things started. It's a good vibe and. Um, I, the lyric escapes me offhand, but uh, there was a lyric or there was a line that just stood out to me that was in that song that I can I can find it real quick. Now, have you like? Would you say you've listened to Front Two Four Two for a while, or is this just something you come across and you're like, ah, oh, you know, I'm gonna play this? Um, it's more of a recent it's cool uh, dive, just getting more familiar uh, with the like Wax Tracks discography. Um, I watched the doc, I watched the wax, the wax tracks uh, documentary that okay. that was that had come out and that just kind of piqued my interest into what else was kind of out there. So the truth is, is you're really willing to dig into anything. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> for sure. That's 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 me as a whole. That's why there's nothing you can send me where I'll be like, why did you send me this? It could be a guy yodeling, and I could be like, okay, well this could be cool <laughs> in a certain way. And that's where it seems like you, you know, you go through a lot of, you know, your show. Another great artist, when I looked down that you played, uh, was this one. I mean, come on, man. Who's playing that? That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to play some Pat Metheny for a while. And it's been on, when, when I prep a show, I'll prep up like an hour of music and just kind of dig through um you know whatever comes up like my first set is pretty well planned out then after that it's kind of whatever the vibe is at the moment or you know kind of that set whatever fits in and just pat Nathaney hadn't fit in and then um his birthday was monday wow. so it was time to play some pat Nathaney, and uh that travels record is amazing and um, yeah, the field, this guy just stood out and we may have lost Tony again. I 
think Tony's got gremlins. Well, I'll just keep going anyway. But with that Pat Metheny song, um, listening to it, like I'm a big Trey Anastasio fan, and listening to that song, that is that is rift. <laughs> <laughs> I, you were frozen again, so I just kept it going. I know, no, you did good. You did good. Uh, <laughs> running into huge technical difficulties. Today was my very first day back into the classroom, which was as this is going today about, you know, it's smooth, but we're, we're rocking right now. And that's, you know, back to what you were just wrapping up by saying, but with, with Pat is bringing that guitar style like that. And then coming with something like two, four, two front two, four, two, it really myself, it, it makes me like, I went through your last couple uh shows before, before doing this. And I mean, the artist that's on the screen here, you played them the time before. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, you, is that Miss Troll? <laughs> you, it, sh it sure is. Uh, that's again, a great track. Again, when I'm looking up for pictures for some of this, uh, some of this stuff, it's, it's really cool to uh, to explore, and that's what's one of the, the fun things is. But uh, I was going to ask you real quick. I don't know before we uh, we went on the air. I don't know if you heard. Have you ever been to Riot Fest? I, I have not, but <clears throat> I know where you're going. <laughs> Did you hear the switch from? Why, why is that? Do you do you have any like why like? I I have zero insight. I know, I know. It's really <laughs> it's really just weird. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was something that that crossed my mind before the show because it was the main um, news story. But again, um. Any shows you have coming up that, or shows that you've seen recently? Um, yeah, so the two most recent shows that were fantastic were um, I had the good fortune of working the Friday night show of the Out of Space Festival that was in Skokie this year. Okay. So um, a, a bucket list artist I wanted to see that finally got checked off was Squirrel Flower, who one of your guests had mentioned before. And been a big squirrel flower fan for excuse me a few years and just finally getting to see her play it was excuse me she was terrific and then um bob mold played us played solo and yeah bob mold was great um and then courtney barnett was the headliner she's and, always from man, what i heard live from her it's good man i, I did not know that was going to be her live show um, like she, she's always been more of kind of like in that Kurt Vile war on drugs kind of vein, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But that was not her show. It was like a power trio. Oh, and just, she was magic, man. It, there was, there was stuff happening out there that was wonderful. Awesome. So, um, and then I had noticed the other, uh, they had a couple of those festivals. There was two other days that they had out there and really all the bands bob mold i mean i've been listening to a lot of sugar recently yeah so uh you know definitely uh that would have been cool so um upcoming one of the shows i'm really excited about is uh i'm seeing both nights of the ocs at um Thalia hall this time instead of one night so <clears throat> i'm excited about that um there's another i just put this in my phone because i really needed to keep track of this anyway but uh um friday night fax is playing at fitzgerald's in berwin so and if you're not familiar with fax or if you haven't seen them before they're incredible are they <clears throat> they're they're incredible and just the the nicest people um but the one i'm really excited about is uh at the empty bottle on september 20th is uh a shoegaze ambient like dream pop band love love lies crushing is playing and they've been around for a long time but their their debut album um which the name escapes me offhand is just terrific um so i'm really excited about that uh they're playing with mahogany who's another detroit kind of shoegaze dream pop and a local band twin coast who's kind of a drone noise shoegaze and they're they're very very good as well so i'm excited about that one 
those are you got you got a whole plethora of awesome shows coming up i mean it's cool that you when you're in um where were you at where were you uh seated for courtney barnett were you good seats could you see her pretty well you're good um i was way i was way way in the back but it's that still, was fine right. because yeah i you know that's i mean i heard it all man i heard it all that's a and we, i'm not going to speak you know i'll speak for myself when i you know, at the at the ripe age of forty two, I'm okay to hang out in the back and just yep. rock out back there. You know what I mean? Um, I've been sometimes caught too much up in the front, but as long as you were happy, that's really what it's all about. Um, real quick, if you could say, what's what would you say one of the biggest shows you've ever been to? You go to a lot of smaller club concerts. What's one of the larger concerts that you've been to? The larger ones, like a, um, a, a bigger band, a larger artist, somebody who you would have had to have seen maybe at the World Music Theater, Tinley Park, or United Center, or I mean, I've seen <clears throat> I've seen Fish a few times. Oh, okay. Um, that, always here. Good, a lot of fun at the Fish shows. Yeah, yeah, that was like twenty years ago, <laughs> but... which is which is equally as cool. Um, I, I, I don't know who the biggest band, probably Wilco is the biggest band I've seen in the last. Where know. did, is this, did you see them recently? Uh, last year I saw them twice. So I was fortunate enough to get a ticket for uh, when they did the residency at the Riviera. Oh, okay. Last year when they did the unique set list every night. And then um, I saw them right after Cousin dropped. I saw them like a couple of days after in New Mexico. Yeah, now, like, terrific. terrific. <laughs> I, I'm a huge Wilco fan. I'm a huge fan of that Cousins record. Was one of my favorites. Yes. Um, um, and when I listened to it too, it was like 11:30 at night with all the lights off, and mm -hmm. it really gave the mood. And like, uh, like if you listen to it, like I listened to it the first time on YouTube, they had like a visual screen when you were listening to it all. It was okay. honestly because I got big speakers hooked up to it while I was doing it that before I got the record. But that being said, um, Wilco's great, man. I mean, Oh yeah. They still are. I didn't get the, I would say pretty close to the top of their game. Um, you know, I, yeah, I mean, are they, uh, there are some of their past records are better maybe than, than cousins, but that still doesn't mean that they're still not out there, you know, doing a good job. Yeah. Cousin, cousin and cruel country have been, Two, two of my favorite releases well, from them in the good. last like 15 years, probably since Sky Blue Sky. So now, like, are you like, let's say, for instance, really quick, I was like, uh, you know, myself, or let's say Adam was like, hey, man, I got fourth row for this concert right here that just happened at Soldier Field. <laughs> it's Metallica. Would you go? Sure. Are we, what? Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. Okay, awesome. See? Let's go. <laughs> Every minute, you know, you're becoming cooler and cooler because it's like, why not? You know what I mean? Um, but that's it's that's that's how music is. Um, you you got to explore. You got to look deeper. There's this artist that I always think back to in the early 70s that my dad told me about. They're called Captain Beyond. I don't know if mm -hmm. you've ever heard of them. But uh, again... A lot of artists are, when other artists are big and becoming famous, like, you know, there are artists that are so much under the surface that people miss out on. And that's why OCs and stuff like that, you know, it's good to, to talk about and spread spread the word. But, uh, like, do you have already this next week's already planned or getting planned to the next set list? Um, I definitely have some thoughts. Like, there, there, there's some stuff still left over from last show that I, get, that I didn't get to and like throughout the week i'm always thinking of stuff and just writing down ideas and you know all all that so just kind of storm brainstorming and something could come up that's that's kind of how sometimes you know putting together i, I would imagine you know i mean i don't know how do you think it works like at xrt do you think they just like pick it out do they have a list that they have to play from how does i, I, I would assume that. 
I would assume they have a they have a like rotate a rotation or priority list mm. where they have to you know play these artists or play these songs on during the hour. But I, I would assume they have some free reigns to, to kind of do you know whatever they want. So let, let's so back to we uh, spoke at the beginning and you said you were going to go a little bit more into. What were we talking about at the beginning? You said you were going to go there a little bit more late, early later. What was it? It's when we were talking about King. Oh, I, I think it was the OCs and. Yes, it was the OCs. Was, That's what it was. I'm just going to talk about. about yeah, yeah. The big thing I was just going to talk about was, um, what, what we already touched on. Is it's their it's, upcoming shows. Um. It's, and where did you say those shows were again? It's at uh, Thalia Hall. Thalia Hall. Somebody recently just told me that the place is a, a very awesome place to to see a concert. Um, they're always, um, you know, I, I seen recently you played uh, the Decemberists. Oh yeah. Um, you do you like the Decemberists? Oh yeah. Uh, have you dug into their newest album yet? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Probably. Probably the one I like the most since probably Hazards of Love, I would say. Um, it's another band that, again, uh, a good album band. You know, a band yeah. where I like to listen to track one and just sit and listen to the whole thing to see where they're going to take you on a journey. They're they're usually just, lyrically, it's all a story. Like Crane Wife, you know, is a... That's what know, I was just going to bring up, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a love, you know... Okay. I, a love story what during during war i guess and it's just the whole story hazards of love is a story um yeah they're just one of those bands that it's not really a concept album but it's it's a front to back it's a story i like the song uh again which is different than a lot of their other stuff but like a perfect crime yeah where it's got the bass where it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of something the the rhythm of a talking heads you know something a little bit more which i like when bands could be all acoustic and then you throw in this awesome jam in the middle of it too, which shows that I think a lot of artists listen to so many different things. It's hard not to, you know, the, uh, there's a track on the new uh, December album. Um, it's, it sounds like a uh, squirrel nut zippers. It's not squirrel nut zippers, but it's uh what's the name of the track. I'm going to pull it up here in a second, but it's um, they can do different sounds, you know, and that's generally, when you know you're in the you're in the uh echelons of a pretty a pretty good band oh no is the song that i'm talking about yeah um where it's like it's i like that you know because why reading about them recording you know they record in a, a huge barn which mm -hmm. like just to be sitting on a chair watching them i, I like thinking of stuff like that right um i think it's the decemberist where one of their one of their members, I want to say it's maybe their bass players from Valparaiso. Oh, really? Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, you know, you've you've also played Devo. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I, I I was very upset recently. They came to the Riviera. Um, I did not get to it was a couple months ago. That would have been awesome. I mm -hmm. did see them at Lollapalooza 97. Okay. At Tinley Park. But uh just this past weekend, I was on, uh, and I saw they did one of those tiny desk concerts. Oh, they did. Like, and it was actually not bad. They played uh, Come Back Joni, which, okay. uh, which is an awesome song, but big Devo fan. You like Devo? Oh, yeah. Um, have you seen the uh, Have you seen the Human Highway movie? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> with Neil with Young. Young. Oh, Neil yeah. Young and uh, their they work at the nuclear plant. <laughs> if you uh, get a chance uh, on our uh, on our channel here, a while ago, like six seven months ago, I did. Uh, it was like a two minute short about the Devo Neil Young collaboration. It's okay, got, it's got cool music videos. Which I want to be honest with you, when I ran across it, it blew my mind because I didn't know anything about it. And their <laughs> jam, I mean, it sounds good. It, I mean, it, it sounds really good. Um, the juxtaposition between both artists, because I love Neil Young too. So, like to oh, see yeah. um, them them play and they mix, and, and when they do a 
what was it that they covered on there? I think it was Hey Hey My My. Yeah, and it sounds it sounds pretty awesome. It sounds great, and yeah, the visuals are just so surreal <laughs> with it, and it's it's so good, but at the same time, just so wacky. It is. It is very, very, very wacky. Um, Sonic Youth. Um, you like Sonic Youth, Kim Gordon? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, Kim Gordon has a new single out that's really good. It's kind of in that like grimy, sleazy trap mm. style that that her last album was in, and I think her last album's really good. Um, but it's also mind blowing. She's seventy and still like experimenting and making new music. That's really like I, just, I, I love. I love doing this with age. Like my my wife's grandma's still alive, and she's like ninety three or ninety four, and that's Clint Eastwood's mm -hmm. age. So I'm always like, Clint's out on a on a movie right now, filming. You know, it's cool to think of age and think of like, wow, still putting out quality, awesome stuff. Right, yeah, Clint's still putting out super awesome stuff. But uh, Kim Gordon is that's 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 awesome. Um, uh, one of my favorite uh, records released this year is the Winged Wheel record. Um, and Steve Shelley is the drummer on on that record. Mm. And yeah, that wing that winged wheel record is very, very good. Let me okay, I'm gonna give you really quick here off topic. Let's see if I'm gonna give you three movies with a radio DJ. Okay, you got play Misty for me. I know you've seen that. <laughs> uh, uh, have you ever seen uh, talk radio, Oliver Stone? Uh, I don't think I've seen that one, no. How about uh, FM? It came out in like 78. But you've uh, seen Play Misty for me, so back to Play yes. Misty for me. That movie's amazing. <laughs> that, that I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a big, I'm a big thriller <laughs> fan, but like the radio DJ, she calls in and says, do me a favor and play Misty for me. Mm -hmm. Amazing. If it's been a while, got to rewatch that one. Yeah. The other ones are, are, are not as good as Play Misty for me, so. Did you stop playing Misty for me? Um, King of uh, one that always comes to mind too is King of Marvin Gardens. Oh, that's a good one too. Great one with Jack Nicholson. Yeah, really, really good. Jack is always, always good. Um, how about REM? You like REM? Oh, one of the best. Uh, it, there's a there's another one, Deep Cuts, go the whole album. You know, of course, there's a whole lot more better than the ones that you heard played a hundred times. And that's why, you, that's when you know you're in the presence of a great band. Mm -hmm. You know, you know you're in the presence of, of of listening to awesomeness when you've had multiple great full albums that, that are good. Oh, yeah, and just their, you know, how, how long they've been, or, you know, how, how long they've, yeah. their their output was and you know they're still relevant today um is it mike mills is in what american uh, baseball project I think, yeah mike mills peter buck peter buck plays in there too um i think okay. on that last tour he was playing with them too um you know they seem to be guys who really love just to play music i yeah. mean they don't seem to be somebody who's like they seem to be approached a lot to get back together and they they won't have it, which it's remarkable, you know, because mm -hmm. how many people go, well, no, you know, but, you know, recently it was, they were on uh, like CBS in the morning. It was the first time the four of them had been in a, in an interview and even going back to uh, Bill Barry when he left after the, after uh, the Ventures in Hi-Fi album, mm -hmm. you know, and then, for about four or five, six albums, it was just the three of them as a trio. Yeah. Which some of that stuff is good. But even going back to uh, Bill Barry, I mean, he admits that, you know, it's hard when you left a long time ago. And maybe it sounds like there might have been times where he might have even wanted to come back. And they're like, you know what? It's just the three of us now sometimes, which, which happens. Right. Um, it's also crazy. I talk about it all the time is being in a band is like, it's like, it's like marriage. You know what I mean? Like these guys, uh, I, 
I am not uh, uh, vouching for Lover Boy, but recently they opened <laughs> up for Sammy Hagar at Tinley Park, and I mean, still four of the five original members from '78. Right. I mean, we got bands from you know the '90s who don't even only got the singer out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you, it is admirable when guys can stick together and keep keep playing. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it's uh, I always just like. Uh, like uh like thinking of, of music that way and thinking of how awesome it is when uh like guys i mean even if you're a fan or not whatever of you too but to see it's the same guys are out there they're not like uh back at star of course you're familiar with the uh star plaza theater um oh yeah <laughs> I, before, before it cl closed down i had my uh in-laws uh, took me to go see like uh uh was it uh peter noon and it's like the buckinghams and it's mm -hmm. like one guy and it's like a bunch of other people i like i like when a band can stick together because that means that you've had to ride through a lot of just trauma and stuff like that oh it's yeah but uh just really 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 uh everyone out there if you can please check out your show is amazing my chirp radio i'm gonna keep promoting it um hopefully next month maybe you can come back and we can talk some more yeah for sure uh, definitely always enjoy having you on so thank you very much mike yeah thanks for having me on uh but that is our show tonight everyone um thank you so much for joining us we talked about a lot of awesome deep music um always enjoy er sharing it with you guys um Let's uh, this Friday on the at the show podcast uh, for the release of Alien Romulus. I don't know if you're excited about that one, Mike, um, but <laughs> uh, that is uh, coming out. We are going to be doing a deep dive into 10 uh, alien movies that you uh, may or may not uh, have heard of. So please check into that. That's going to be Friday at 830. Um, check into that on the YouTube channel here. Um, but again, Mike, thank you for coming on, and we will again talk soon. Please, everyone out there, again, check out Chirp Radio. It's on Sunday nights at midnight, right? Yeah, Sunday night, Monday morning, however you want to look at it. And then you can um, – then uh, it also streams online, right? Yep, uh, chirpradio.org, stream online, or if you do uh, Radio Garden, um, it's also on Radio Garden. Awesome. Um, do that because honestly, all this, a lot of this music that we've talked about tonight, you can hear uh, that front 242 playing on the radio, which is very awesome because it's a lot better than listening to Imagine Dragons. <laughs> so uh, thank you a lot, Mike. Thank you, everyone else out there. We will definitely be talking to you soon. And uh, we will, uh, everyone out there, have a very good week. Take care. Thank you for listening. Please look out for the audio version wherever you jam.